Hello, John Dove here. Welcome to the latest episode of the Speed Mooting Partners in Crime podcast. This is episode 14. Um, it was a slightly shorter episode than normal today, as Haley and I have just recently returned from Seville. So we wanted to ensure that we got some content out for you this week anyway. So within the episode today, we discussed a little bit about criminal law. So we discussed sentencing in relation to dangerous driving, and we also discussed retrials in the Crown Court. We answered some of your questions, and we were talking about the inspiration as to why it is the Haley and I went into the law. We discussed the latest from the Advocacy Club and how you can have the opportunity to conduct a full trial across the course of the summer. And lastly, we finished by talking about our time in Seville. We thoroughly enjoyed recording it. We hope you enjoy listening. Welcome to the podcast. Hello, we are live. Welcome to the next episode of the Speed Mooting Partners in Crime podcast. My name is John. And I'm Hayley. And welcome along. Welcome, welcome. So today we're on episode 14. Wow. 14, so that means we've been recording for... 14 weeks. 13 weeks. Why 13? <laughs> because think about it, episode one is like week zero. So when, when you record... Why is that episode one not week one? Because, well, so, so let's, let, 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 let's assume, let, let's say like last week was our first ever episode and assume we were recording episode two today. How long would we have been recording? Yeah, a week. Yeah. But I'd still cast week episode one as week one. Fine. But so so so, so when you when you got the Oh episode because two, it's on you... fourteen but we've been recording for thirteen yeah. weeks. Yeah. It's been thirteen weeks since the first episode. I'm you don't with include you. The, the time in the week leading up to the first mm. episode. Yeah, okay, okay. It's, it's like the whole when you have your bir- your thirty third when when you're thirty three you're in your thirty fourth year yep. of life or Get that. It. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> but the inverse. <laughs> anyway, episode 14. For those that are new to the podcast, we like to name our episodes. At the start, it was Formula One drivers. We then ventured off into football. football and I think we did other stuff. I can't remember. We've, we've definitely segmented off into things like WWE and Olympic sports and American football. American and the football. Like. Anyway, thankfully, we're back to Formula One. Phew. And it's quite appropriate because, for those that don't know, Hayley and I were in Spain earlier this week. We no doubt we'll talk about that later on. Oh, yeah. And today, episode 14, number 14, is a Spanish driver. He's a two-time Formula One world champion. Is he a current driver? He is a current driver. <laughs> no, no doubt he'll be a current driver for the next 50 years Alonso <laughs> Fernando Alonso <laughs> you see all the memes online where they, they've used AI to make him like a 90 year old I man I love it goes, Aston, uh, Fernando Alonso re-signs with Aston Martin <laughs> I think it would be absolutely amazing if Alonso got the Mercedes seat that would be wouldn't insane. that be incredible that would be incredible I mean the man deserves Who it make, who's making that decision we need to give them a shout out Toto now Toto Wolf Toto, Toto? Mason, come on the podcast we'll have a chat with you uh, <laughs> Kimmy Antonelli might not be too happy about that but we'll sorry see. Kimmy sorry Kimmy <laughs> <laughs> join Williams and get your Mercedes seat in a few years <laughs> so anyway welcome to episode 14 the Fernando Alonso special welcome welcome so it's going to be a slightly shorter episode than normal because, as we've alluded to, Hayley and I were on holiday earlier this week in Seville. Sunny Seville. So it's been a shorter week for us, but we never want you to miss an episode, so we made sure we've recorded an episode, albeit it's slightly shorter this week. Normal service will be resumed next week. It's bite-sized. It's a bite-sized episode. Still fun, still valuable. Absolutely. Or is it? You tell us in the comments. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, comment below. If you think it's no good, tell us. (laughs) So, we'll jump straight in with Legal Corner. Let's go. And, you know, I've talked a bit about sentencing recently, so I'll I'll, I'll continue with the same subject. Mm -hmm. And something I dealt with recently, and something that might be quite interesting for people because... This is something that people will deal with if they go into criminal law and certainly in their early days in the Crown Court Mm -hmm. is sentencing in relation to dangerous driving. Now, 
Uh, with dangerous driving, that's an either way offence. So it can be dealt with either in the magistrate's court or the Crown Court. Um, so for those that don't know, let's say it was going to go to trial. Um, if the um, offence wasn't that serious and the magistrates felt they could keep jurisdiction, you could have your trial there, you can even have your sentencing there. However, if the magistrates refuse jurisdiction or if you as the defendant say, no, I want my trial in the Crown Court, then it goes up. Uh, and likewise, if you plead guilty, it can be committed for sentence in the Crown Court. So I had a sentencing hearing recently mm -hmm. in relation to a dangerous driving offence. Uh, the offence itself was, was serious enough to warrant custody in its own right, but my client was actually a serving prisoner. So that causes a problem for the court because they need to impose a, a driving disqualification because uh, dangerous driving carries a minimum mandatory 12-month driving disqualification with an extended retest at the end. Um, so when you come to get your driving licence back, it's not like you just apply to the DVLA. You have to physically retake your driving test, and it's an extended driving test. Coming back to what I'm talking about, uh, think about it. Let's say you're a serving prisoner, and the court imposes a 12-month disqualification. If you're serving, and you serve, you know, you serve effectively 15 months, let's say, um, you've done no ban. You've served, you've served your ban whilst you're in prison. Yeah. So that's a problem, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So the way the court get around this, and, and the, the way the sentencing guidelines deal with this, is... Whatever your driving ban is, the court will add 50% of your custodial sentence on top of your ban. Because the thinking behind that is, as a general rule, you would save 50% of your um, custodial sentence in prison. Yep. And then the other half is saved on licence. So to give you an example, let's say you were given a 12-month driving ban. And let's say you were given a 6-month custodial sentence alongside your driving ban. The court would say, well, okay. You're going to save three months of your six months custody. Mm -hmm. So we'll add three months on top of your driving ban. So you get a 15 month ban. The idea being is that so in effect, whatever ban the court wants to give you, that starts from the day that you leave prison. Well, makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. But no, just something interesting. I thought something that our listeners may be interested in, particularly if they're interested in criminal law, something that you... Yeah, and it's with. a little tidbit that you wouldn't know until you experience it, no, wouldn't you? Of course. So. Uh, and I mentioned in terms of, you know, sometimes you might have somebody who's already a saving uh, prisoner. So the, the typical scenario of that might be, let's say, they commit two completely separate offences. One's committed whilst on bail. They end up getting a custodial sentence for the first unrelated matter. They then come before the court separately for the dangerous driving matter. So they're already a saving prisoner prisoner in relation to something else and then receive a custodial sentence for this what the court can do there is the court can actually look at the previous custodial sentence and once again take the 50 percent of that and add that on because once again you may find if they're saving a very lengthy sentence for something else yeah once again they may find themselves in the position whereby they save the ban in custody so mm. the court is entitled to take into account the uh, the previous custodial sentence. Yeah, but definitely. Of course, in fairness, what they do is, let's say they've already served part of that. Whilst the fifty percent is added on, it will be reduced for any time that's been served. Mm -hmm. So yeah, just something interesting in terms of sentencing there. Very much. So something else. From while we're on the subject of criminal law, that's been in the news. I think it was only yesterday that it hit. Yeah. Um, Lucy Letby. Yes. So as you know, she was convicted for murder and attempted murder of lots of babies very recently but she's just been retried for further crimes and she's been found guilty again yeah. so I thought you could just talk to us about how does that work when you've been tried and found guilty of some not guilty of others or inconclusive etc yeah how does the process then work of being retried for the yeah. same crime so, so so what will happen is so in relation to the first offense no doubt there will have been a hung jury on some of the counts yes so a hung jury means you have a jury which simply cannot make a decision so for those that don't know you have 12 members on a jury when, once the jury go out initially, so once the trial is over, the judge has given the direction to the jury, they go to their room to make their decision. The judge will say, we need a unanimous verdict. So all 12 must agree one way or the other, either yep. guilty or not guilty, to make a decision. Then once, once a certain amount of time has passed, so um, as a minimum two hours and ten minutes, the judge can then give a majority direction to the jury. 
And what that means is that the judge will accept a majority of 10 to 2. Mm -hmm. So 10 either way. So that could be either, if as long as 10 people agree that the defendant is guilty or 10 people agree that the defendant is not guilty, um, then they will ex the judge will accept a majority. Yeah. If you have three people that are convinced one way or the other, then you've got a bit of a stalemate, haven't you? Mm -hmm. Those three people can't be convinced um, to join the, the sort of majority. So if you've got a 9-3, that simply isn't enough. Yeah. Um, and what will happen is once the jury gets to the point whereby they say, you know what, we're at a stalemate, we simply cannot make a decision. The judge can give a Watson direction at that point. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Um, but when it gets to the point whereby the jury simply cannot, you, you know, you yeah. know, the, the deadlock no can't way. be broken, it will then be a hung jury. The Crown Prosecution Service then can make a decision. Uh, normally they have seven days from the point of there being a hung, a hung jury to decide whether or not to bring a retrial. Mm -hmm. And if the prosecution decide that there will be a retrial, that you then effectively have a whole fresh You do trial. the whole thing again Everything with a fresh, done again. fresh jury. Fresh jury. All the witnesses need to give evidence live again in court, unless they've given pre-recorded uh, evidence, because pre-recorded evidence is sort of frozen in time. So that can yeah. obviously be reused. Um but as a, as a general rule, any live witnesses need to come back. They give their evidence again. The speeches are given freshly to the uh, new jury. Um, so it's a whole new trial um, and all the evidence needs to be given again. Yeah, so this is just a good example of commercial awareness and how simple it can be. So yeah. you see something like that pops up on your newsfeed, on your social medias. Just have a little further read into it. Oh, OK, so she's been she's been retried, she's been mm -hmm. found guilty. What does that mean? What is a retrial? What's... What happens? What are the cogs working yes. behind that? Just so you're delving deeper between just knowing what's happening and understanding a little bit more about what that means. Yeah, absolutely. Because as you say, you know, in an interview, that that might be a sort of prompt for further questions. As you say, you know, them asking you what a what a retrial, what a hung jury, what decisions what... go into it, what why does that happen, what do you think about it, is it good, is it bad, etc. So. Yeah. Just everything that you see that just, you know, strikes a little chord, piques your interest, just do some deeper reading into it. And before you know it, you just expand your knowledge of that subject matter, definitely, won't you? Definitely. Okay, so Ask Speed Squad, our question corner. Yes. <laughs> so I had a question on LinkedIn. I thought, oh, that's a nice one. I'll save it for the podcast. <laughs> really? So very simple. The question was just interested in me asking me a few questions about my background but one of the ones that I thought I would save was just um what inspired you to come into law basically oh, okay so um for me personally so we always talk about this story don't we what you want to be when you're when, when you were little and everyone has little funny answers do you remember what you wanted to be when you were little like a little boy uh probably not when I was that young um, you didn't want to be like a fireman or a policeman or anything like that. No, I, do you know I, I don't have any memories of that. I think like, I, I, I don't really think I thought that far ahead. I think no. when I was that much of a kid. I don't ever think I ever thought I'd actually grow up. You know, so. <laughs> I still don't think you've grown up now. I, I still don't think I actually did. <laughs> um, so yeah, so me, I well, firstly I wanted to be an actress, and then I think it was because I was like starting to become obsessed with Harry Potter a little bit when I was really young. So I've seen them going off to boarding school and stuff, and I realised you could go off to, like, st stage school, boarding school. But anyway, I got a brochure from somewhere. I took it to my mum and dad, like, I want to go here, I want to be an actress. And it was, like, £6,000 a term or something. So my mum and dad were like, maybe not, you know. This, yeah. this, you live in a council house, Haley. This is a working-class family. No, <laughs> you can't go to stage school. Um, so I went to, like, drama club instead. Nice. Like, 50p a week <laughs> around the corner. Um, and it's probably a good idea that I didn't go to stage school because I did, like, two plays and was like, man, I'm over this now. So from there, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I think I went through a little phase of wanting to be a teacher. And then the main thing for me was just I wanted to find a career where... It was going to be stable and it was going to pay well. Yeah. So I wanted, I knew I wanted to have a comfortable life, you know. People all around me were always going on holiday on aeroplanes and I had to wait for the free child place to come around every time and go with my nana granted. So me and my brother and sister took turns to take the free child place and then 
we just had little caravan holidays and thing like things like that, which you know I loved. Wouldn't and, change it. <laughs> what you like, say? I'm just, just thinking, you know, the kind of people that we mingle with at law school. Imagine saying that at university. Oh, I remember um, <laughs> when you start meeting people and they're like, oh yeah, I took a gap year up to go travel, and it's like, mm. yeah, oh. I had a free child place once every three years. Yeah. <laughs> well done, mate. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, so I just, I, for me, I was just like, what, what's a career out there that's academic based as well? That was important because I really wanted to go to university and stuff because nobody around me ever had. But just something that I thought was going to pay well and give me a comfortable life. And the two options that I could think of in my little probably 14 year old brain at this point was a doctor or a lawyer. Yeah. And I was scared of blood. So I was like, well, that's that one gone. So, yeah, let's be a lawyer. So that's where it started. I also saw Legally Blonde and was like, yes! <laughs> I want to be Elle Woods. I'll show you how valuable Elle Woods can be. <laughs> so that's where it all stemmed from. Just the initial idea and, and inspiration of law. And then studied law at A-level and really, really enjoyed it. So all them superficial -ish reasons probably wouldn't have worked if I hadn't actually enjoyed the topic and enjoyed studying law as well, yeah. which I really did. Loved it at A-level, loved it at uni. And yeah, the rest is history. So that's where my inspiration and interest stems from. How about you, John? Yeah, same. So, I mean, you were asking before about, you know, first sort of idea of a job. So I think when I was about 13, I got the idea of being an airline pilot, mm -hmm. thinking, quite well, I think it'd be quite cool. I get to go on holiday all the time. Um, and I think the money's all right as a pilot. I don't um, think they do too badly now. I don't think they do too badly. Um, and then a couple of years later, I think, you know, same as you, must have seen the programme. So my mum used to watch like Perry Mason and stuff like that. And, you know, you'd see them on TV, they're walking around, these American shows, walking around the courtroom, they've got these sharp suits on, they're arguing. And I got the impression that lawyers are pretty well paid. So I was like, do you know what? Yeah. Sign me up for that. <laughs> Sign me up for that. <laughs> and once again, you know, just the idea of what a profession you can go into where you're going to have a bit of a comfortable life. Yep. I thought, yeah, absolutely, 100%. So that was my inspiration, but mm -hmm. it's it's pretty hard to put on a, an application for, oh, why do you want to be a barrister? Looks fun and I bet we're well paid. <laughs> <laughs> Which it, the reality is that, and I think that's the reality for most people. Yeah. Um, that's where it starts from, though, isn't it? That's where it, it starts. But, but you know, let, let's be honest, you know, it's not just that. And we've spoken about this before. You know, if you're going in simply because your inspiration is to get well paid, well, okay. you, you're going to go nowhere because if you try and do something you're not actually interested in, yes. you're knackered. Well, I mean, the, the reality is, it's it, I enjoy it. You know, I, I thoroughly enjoyed the study of law. It was a shock to the system, actually, because I studied, studied at A level. Business, IT, and maths. Yep. So, law. You hadn't done it at A level, yeah. Didn't do it at A level. Never studied it previously. So, A, the concept of law was, was quite shocking. Um, I, I, and just the, the way that you're studying, because you know, I was studying kind of quite, I, I don't know, quasi science based things mm -hmm. to, to a point. Um, I suppose business is sort of linked, but you know, it's business is just common sense. Whereas law, it's it's kind of a bit like history, I suppose, in a way. You know, you're studying previous things that have happened and applying it to yep. uh, fact patterns and, and things of that nature. So, but I, I, you know, so it was hard to, to adapt to it initially, but once I did, I absolutely loved it. Loved it. You know, <laughs> I enjoyed my mooting. <laughs> did you really, John? <laughs> <laughs> Who'd have thought that? Um, and then went on to study the bar course. And, you know, the bar course was hard, but best year of my life in terms of academics really, really? yeah yeah did you do it full time full time yeah, yeah. see I didn't enjoy the LPC mm. and I think it's because I did it part time and I was working full time so I used to work full time and then go and do that like of an evening yeah so for me it was just like I've just got to get through this I need to just I need to pass this I need to tick this box so I can carry on on my training yeah. contract route I often wonder whether if I'd have done it full time I would have enjoyed it a lot more. Maybe, yeah, because I did my LPC part-time as well, so I was working full-time at the same time. And did uh, you enjoy your LPC or in comparison to the bar course? It, it was all right because I think th the way we did it, because it was on a Saturday and it was all people who were working full-time, we really, let's be frank, we couldn't be bothered. We were there, as you say, just to literally get the certificate so we could go and get training contracts. Yeah. Uh, I don't think there was... In every seminar class I went to, there must have been about... <laughs> two people maybe that had actually done the prep and we yeah. were just like 
the tutors know as well you're Didn't all we doing know, it part time because you're all still working so we used to do like the prep would be the seminars basically <laughs> yeah our <laughs> seminars were basically lectures yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah basically <laughs> yeah so uh, but yeah no but you know I, I enjoy the study of it I love public and speaking we love so the that kind of, of that, that kind of goes hand in hand with being a barrister um, so you know it, it is such a fun job yeah so enjoyable so um, yeah the, the reason whatever, whatever piques your interest into law might differ for various different people maybe you see someone that does it and think oh I want to do that so it's always a little simple reason yeah. but it'll snowball into a huge huge like need and desire to, to break into the profession because <laughs> if you would have told me when I was like 13, 14, whenever it was when I first got this idea. Well, a doctor or a lawyer? Oh, yeah, I'll be a lawyer. How hard it is and how competitive it is. I probably would have chosen something else back then. Yeah. Um, but the more you get into it and you really grow up love and a passion for it, you can't stop, can you? Because you get, especially yes. like if you've got an ambitious and competitive nature, which I think most lawyers do, you're like, I'm, I'm so far into this now. And the harder you hear that it is, the more determined you are to make it, I think. Yeah. Like if it was easy, it'd be like, oh, yeah, it's easy, but it's a challenge, isn't it? Yeah, and I think the fact that it took you and I so long to break yeah. into the profession as well makes it so much. I think we enjoy it a lot more. Mm. So you know, I mean, you know, there's there's people that get their training contract, get their people that just right away. And don't get me wrong, you know, they're probably super bright people, and they've obviously, <laughs> in some circumstances, probably put more effort in than we did at university. Fine, um, but you know, you just, I suppose you might just take it for granted whereas when you've gone yeah. through the gone through the long way you know particularly myself taking 11 years to get to the bar yourself taking so many years to get the training contract it's like it, just... um like climbing a mountain so if you're climbing snows or kilimanjaro if someone just took you on a helicopter and dropped you off at the top yeah, would that be as good as point, you yeah. actually climbing that mountain yeah yeah i would choose to climb every time 100% 100% there we are. There we are. That so, is our Ask Speed Squad segment. Enjoy the climb. Enjoy the climb, as Miley Cyrus would say. <laughs> Miley Cyrus would say. <laughs> B-roll of Miley Cyrus. Yeah. We've, I think we've used that one before. Oh, have we? Mm, is there another song about a climb or a journey? Uh, <laughs> mm. Reach for the Stars by S Club 7. There we go. There we go. <laughs> Bit of S Club 7. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> ah, love right. it uh, so um, we always like to talk about advocacy club yes and, you know for those that don't know the advocacy club it's a low pressure environment for anyone and i mean anyone from a level students through to practitioners to practice their advocacy yep we meet twice a month on zoom and we've got a non-legal club that focuses on public speaking and debating and a legal club that focuses on legal advocacy now all, all of our sessions are standalone sessions you don't need to attend any of the previous ones to understand the next one but the way we've structured our summer is it's quite fun yes so for those that are interested in um, trial advocacy over the summer you are going to have the opportunity to conduct pretty much a full trial yeah so our next three legal advocacy club sessions will focus on the trial so this month it will be the opening speech. Next month, examination of witnesses. So you'll get to do a bit of uh, examination in chief and cross-examination. And then the month after, it will be the closing speech. So across three months, you'll get the chance to do a full trial. Yeah, brilliant. And it's the same trial, isn't it? The same it's fact all, yeah, pattern. Yeah, the same fact pattern. So it's the same trial. So it's not as if you're doing something different. Yeah. It's the same trial throughout. Oh, it's brilliant, isn't it? Yeah. So if you've just finished your studies or you're on a break for the summer, what better way to, to spend your time to boost your CV and to run a trial from start to finish? Well, exactly. And particularly if, you you know, let's say you've finished your bar course and you're in that point now where you're trying to get pupillage, when else are you going to get the opportunity to do a trial until yeah. you actually start pupillage? Yeah. So, yeah, it's going to be fun. So, um, yep. yeah, keep an eye out for that. If you want to join... Go on to speedmooting.com, click the link for the advocacy club, and all the information is there. Boom. Closely related, we still have places left for our next competition, don't we, John? Yes, we but do. they are being filled very, very quickly. Yeah. Um, each day we're we're ticking away at that list, aren't we? So it's 
probably yeah. going to be fall. I think the end of this month. The end of this month, 100%. It's going to be Easily, fall. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, again, you know, you've just finished your studies or you're on your summer break and you're looking for something to start the new academic year with a bang. Join us for the next National Speed Mooting Competition, the Autumn Cup, taking place on the 7th of September in BPP London Central. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we've been teasing this for a while. We've got one more big announcement. And when I say big, I'm talking huge. Mm-hmm. Probably not by the time we release the next podcast, but maybe the podcast after. I think we may have launched this event. So um, if you want to know what we're talking about, join our mailing list speedmooting.com forward slash contact throw your email address in there you'll be on our mailing list i will keep you up to date because this is by far and away the biggest event we have ever put on yep um you've been talking about this event for as long as i've known you yeah so almost six years yeah and you've always said you'd love to do this you'd love to do this and this you were like well let's do it then let's do it let's do it yeah, it's crazy how we do that. We just get an idea. Like, you know what? Why are we talking about it? Let's just, let's just do it and let's do it. Yeah. Um. So I, I am pumped, pumped, pumped to <laughs> um, to announce this. Um. But yeah, so I, I reckon within the next fortnight we'll we'll make the announcement. Hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. um, so finally, we'll we'll talk about our week now. So we went to Seville, we went to Seville. over the weekend. Yeah. I don't know why I was thinking so. What, what, what have I been up to? Um, yeah, I just went to Seville. Uh, just went to Seville. So yeah, we spent four days up there, didn't we? Oh, it was so nice, wasn't it? Yeah, such a nice city. We didn't realise when we booked it, and everyone was telling us after the fact that it's pretty much the hottest city in Europe. Woo! It's hot. It's hot. I mean, we were quite lucky because I think they'd had a little spout of like bad weather just before we got there. Yeah. So, like, the taxi driver was telling us, wasn't he, oh, it's usually much hotter than this. And it was still, like, mid-30s, and we were still dying. Yeah. But people were telling us that it gets to 40 plus, 45. Yeah. We so, would not have coped in that heat, yeah. would we? So, so for, for those in America, that's probably, it's, it was probably about 90 while we were there. Yeah. And normally it's over 100. Yeah. Um. So, yeah. <laughs> but, oh, it was such a beautiful city. So, we got to see the cathedral, we got to see the Alcazar. We went up the the big mushroom, the big mushroom. has an official name, but we call it the big <laughs> mushroom. <laughs> got to taste orange wine. Oh yeah, that was nice, wasn't it? Oh, so good. Got to see a lot of flamenco shows. Yeah. Really, really good. So yeah, came home feeling very enriched. Yeah. Yeah, very good. I even tried tapas, didn't I? You did try tapas, yeah. yeah. So if you watched last week's episode, you know I was a bit cautious concerned about what john was going to eat out there because you have a very basic palate don't you john I do, yeah i do <laughs> so <laughs> i'm looking at all the you know the restaurants out there the places that have got great reviews and it's all you know tapas paella fish tuna yeah. you can see yeah uh, john wasn't impressed so i did have some emergency places i found pizza i found italians i even found an irish pub yeah, that saved, we were there twice, didn't that we? That saved British pub food. So we, we had our basics, um, but I did convince you to try a real Spanish tapas. Yeah. I think you gave I, it like I, a I 4 out of 10. Yeah, 4 out of 10, you know, that's, that's <laughs> not bad. That's, you that's tried right. it. Yeah, you tried it. Yeah. You definitely tried it. So, yeah. you know, can't yeah. say you, you weren't willing to try it. And, and you know what? I, I was able to eat a few little bits and bobs, wasn't yeah. I? So, yeah, gave it a go. Um, just not for me. <laughs> not, not, not my thing. <laughs> no, but I was very proud of you for trying. Yeah, thank you, thank you. <laughs> well, that brings us to the end of our shortened episode. Um, I said shortened, we've actually been going for a bit longer than uh, than expected. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no. I hope you've enjoyed this week's episode. Um, if you're still listening at this point, drop us a comment. Um, comment orange wine if you're still listening at this point. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, bonus points if you can put in the Spanish translation. Yeah, yeah. Which yeah. I learned this week. Yeah, weekend. bonus points for that one. So if you're listening and you put it in, in next week's episode, we will tell you if you're correct or not. Yeah, yeah. Good thinking. Good thinking. Testing you, see? Test. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, so I hope you've enjoyed this week's episode. Normal service will be resumed next week. And uh, we'll see you then. Bye. Bye.